threat from China is large and growing. China wants access to our most sophisticated semiconductors, and we cannot afford to give them that access. Uh, we're not just going to deny a single company in China. We're going to deny the whole country access to our cutting-edge semiconductors. These semiconductors are unbelievably powerful, and we can't let them get into the wrong hands. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Remember all that hype about America bringing chip manufacturing back home? The grand pronouncements? The billions thrown at TSMC's Arizona plant? Well, folks, it's time for a reality check. Because while Washington was busy patting itself on the back, China was quietly, strategically, and quite effectively eating their lunch. And the truth about TSMC's Arizona fortress isn't just embarrassing, it's a glaring neon sign pointing to who's really winning the global tech race. TSMC tried to make Arizona Taiwanese, and it's just not going to work. So TSMC leads the world in producing advanced semiconductor chips, which are in the phone that you're watching this with, and these fighter jets, and pretty much every modern electronic device. They're extremely important, which is why the U.S. government has invested billions in bringing TSMC to the United States. TSMC's huge success is built upon a rigorous work culture. Employees work 12-hour days under harsh treatment from managers. When TSMC launched in Phoenix, a cultural clash emerged between Taiwanese and American employees, socially and professionally. American employees were sent to Taiwan for a year of training. Both sides felt that the other had unrealistic expectations. For the Americans, the tight deadlines and the expectation to follow along with meetings in Mandarin. Taiwanese workers complained that the company babied American workers and that their work-life expectations were unrealistic. One employee who spoke to Rest of World said that managers sometimes shamed American workers in front of their peers, sometimes by suggesting that they quit engineering. TSMC's Phoenix facility is still incomplete after four years of construction. The U.S. has a complicated regulatory process, strong construction unions, and a workforce less used to long hours. Despite the flood of investments, the U.S. has a long way to go before chip self-reliance. So let's talk about this Arizona adventure. TSMC, the Taiwanese chip giant, was supposed to build this shining beacon of American semiconductor independence. Instead, it's looking more like a money pit in the desert. We're talking major delays. The first fab, making older 4 nanometer chips, just squeaked into production in 2024. The real cutting edge stuff? Don't hold your breath. We're looking at 2028, maybe even 2030, if they can even get their act together. And the cost? Oh, it's a doozy. The Arizona facility bled nearly half a billion dollars. That's $441 million in losses in 2024 alone. Meanwhile, guess what TSMC's factory in Nanjing, China was doing? Raking in almost $26 billion in profit. Ouch. But why the disaster? Well, it turns out building hyper-complex chip fabs isn't like assembling IKEA furniture. You've got a regulatory maze that makes Taiwan's streamlined system look like a walk in the park, permitting processes taking twice as long. Then there's a sticker shock. Higher chemical cost, a fragmented supply chain, the inconvenient truth that skilled American semiconductor workers are, shall we say, a bit thin on the ground. They're literally flying in engineers from Taiwan to keep the lights on. Even TSMC's own founder, Morris Chang, basically said, I told you so, warning that chip costs in Arizona could be double what they are in Taiwan. So what did America get for its billions in subsidies? One fab making older chips, and maybe, maybe a slightly more advanced one by 2028. What it didn't get, the crucial supply chain, the deep talent pool, or the sheer economic density that makes Taiwan's chip ecosystem a global powerhouse. It's not a fortress, folks. It's a consolation prize. A very, very expensive one. Let me put it to you like this. My understanding from talking to experts in this field is that there is no single chip which you can say, if you don't have this chip, then all your modernization efforts, your military modernization efforts will grind to a halt. There is no single chip like that because there are always workaround solutions. Exactly. With the 95% of chips, you can find workaround solutions. There will be a trade-off 
trade-off in terms of performance, in terms of power consumption, in terms of reliability, but you can design a workaround solution. This idea that having 5% of chips denying access will keep China down, I think is, yes, it will slow down China's access to high-end capabilities to some extent, but it's not going to keep China down forever. China will still be around, and America has to learn to live with China and coexist with China. And hopefully the two countries will be able to find ways to manage their differences and live together. While the U.S. was busy dreaming of desert fabs, China was playing a different game, a much smarter one. You see, Taiwan's chip empire isn't just TSMC. It's a sprawling network of companies, ASC, SPIL, Onimicron, Nanya PCB, a spider web of support firms that are absolutely critical to chip production. And here's the thing, a huge chunk of them are already in China. For decades, China offered these Taiwanese companies a second home. We're talking irresistible incentives, tax holidays, land grants, cheap labor, and the ready supply of Mandarin-speaking engineers. It wasn't a hostile takeover. It was an open invitation, and they came, quietly, steadily, and permanently. From back-end testing to PCB assembly, the very bones of Taiwan's semiconductor economy now run through cities like Suzhou and Kunshan. This isn't just a few factories. These are entire operations, scaled up to meet China's massive domestic needs and export markets. Even major players like Powerchip and UMC have joint ventures with Chinese provinces. This isn't a footprint. It's a deep, strategic integration. And while the U.S. was imposing sanctions and export controls, trying to hobble China's tech ambitions, what happened? China doubled down. It was their Sputnik moment. They poured billions into independent research and development. The third national IC industry investment fund alone injected over $47 billion. They're making rapid progress, especially in crucial areas like photoresist stripping, cleaning, and etching. They're aiming for 50% semiconductor self-sufficiency by 2025. The U.S.'s attempts to disrupt the global supply chain have only accelerated China's drive for self-reliance, creating a robust, efficient industrial ecosystem that TMC's Arizona plant can only dream of. The reality is Taiwan's semiconductor ecosystem is already dual-rooted, one foot in Xingqiu and one foot in Jiangsu. Washington calls it a tech war, but in industrial terms, China has already absorbed half the kingdom without firing a shot. You know, over the last 30 years, China has been a manufacturing country, but it's focused on a lot of the manufacturing is low-end apparels, they're, we're assembling iPhones and making $20 per phone while Apple, with all the IP and the technology, makes $600 of profits on an iPhone, right? There is a, there's a recognition by the government of China that we need to upgrade our technology, we need to upgrade our manufacturing sector, focus more on higher value added manufacturing, things like robotics, aeronautics, high-tech uh, medical equipment, and that's part of the China 2025 manufacturing plan. There's nothing wrong with a country wanting to upgrade its own manufacturing sector, go, more, go higher tech, be more innovative. But then from the Chinese perspective, what we're seeing is there are a lot of people in America that want to stop China from doing that. So that's, that's kind of an unfathomable, what, you know, we're wondering why that's the case. And I think Senator Warner is in that camp. They want to hold China back. I still don't understand it. I, Tend, uh, I would disagree with his characterization of Chinese companies. So, what does this all mean for America's grand plan to prevent China's tech rise? It means they're fighting yesterday's war. While they're focused on building expensive, inefficient fabs on U.S. soil, 
China has been strategically integrating itself into the very fabric of the global semiconductor supply chain, particularly with Taiwan. The U.S. is trying to build a wall, but China's already built a bridge, and half the key players have already crossed it. The Chips and Science Act, with its billions in subsidies, was supposed to shift dependency away from Asia. But analysts are saying it's going to take at least five years of aggressive effort to even begin to see the desired results. And that's if they can bridge the massive cultural and operational gap. And the critical shortage of skilled talent. Money alone can't fix this. The delays in Arizona aren't just a hiccup. They're a symptom of a deeper problem. A problem of ignoring market logic underestimating China's strategic prowess, and overestimating America's ability to simply throw money at a complex, globalized industry and expect instant results. The uncomfortable truth, if Taiwan's semiconductor elite had to pick a side in pure economic terms, many already did two decades ago, and in China's favor. Washington can't admit this because once you do, the Arizona project isn't a fortress. It's a consolation prize. Look at China in, in, the, in chips. The arrogance of America saying, we're going to cut China off from the chip market. Not just communist China. We're going to cut the Taiwanese off from the chip market too because we don't want to be vulnerable to any potential conflict in Taiwan that, that drowns us out. We're going to transfer all this stuff to, to America we're going to tell the, the Dutch, you can't give their your specific lithograph uh, technology to these people. We're going to keep it ourselves because only we then can build. And it was like, well, don't worry. The Chinese, they'll never be able to catch up. And if they do, it'll take them years. Well, the last I checked, uh, Biden's Build Back Better plan was about bringing 4G technology to uh, to rural America. America's locked in on 4G technology. We, we, we do have some 5G. I got a 5G phone here, it doesn't work very well. It's not the phone's problem, it's 5G. We don't do it very well. But uh, China's sitting there going, we, we've deployed 5G everywhere. We got 6G down the road and, and we're looking at 7G. And you're going, wait a minute, how can you do 7G with with insufficient chip technology? China's we sort of got this one figured out too. And they do, they're producing the chips. The US is playing catch up. And frankly, they're not doing a great job. While they're focused on reshoring and trying to rebuild a supply chain from scratch, China has been quietly and effectively integrating itself into the existing global semiconductor ecosystem. They've leveraged economic incentives, cultivated talent, and absorbed key parts of the supply chain. The Arizona project, while a noble effort, is a testament to the challenges of trying to reverse decades of globalized manufacturing with political will and a pile of cash. The chip war isn't just about who can build the most advanced fabs. It's about who controls the entire ecosystem, from design to packaging, from raw materials to skilled labor. And right now, despite all the rhetoric, China is making significant strides in consolidating that control. The U.S. needs a serious reality check and a far more nuanced strategy if it hopes to genuinely compete in the global tech landscape. Otherwise... This isn't just about TMC's Arizona plant failing. It's about America failing to prevent China's tech rise. What do you think? Is this the U.S. fighting a losing battle? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more uncomfortable truths about the tech world. Until next time. Bye.